She is the meanest, nastiest person I have ever, ever spoken to in my entire life. Um, I've seen some things happen to people who are like in opposition to me and my platform. I've seen some bad things happen to them. And I don't know who's committing those acts, but I can speak out against it. I can speak out against the behavior. And I do think that creators have a responsibility to do that. And it's not something that I see happen enough, to be quite honest. Like, I think that I think that all creators uh, from time to time that have any sort of fan base, especially those that can be mobilized, have a responsibility to say something from time to time. Hey, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, then my name is Erica. And today I'm gonna talk a bit about my personal experience with Hello Leash. Now, I put this video off for a, a, a few months now because the situation hurt me and uh, uh, upset me, but now it's something I feel like I'm ready to talk about and I know people are going to be like oh that, that's convenient when everybody's talking about her but also I'm going to be honest I felt like if I talked about this then there was going to be a ton of Hello Leash's subscribers attacking me and I didn't really feel safe doing that I felt like a bunch of people were just gonna come at me and I I didn't want that. But now I feel like I'm I'm ready. I I still hope people don't come to who attack me, but I feel a lot less vulnerable than I did a few months ago when this first happened. But anyway, so a few months ago I made a video about some ableist tweets that Hello Leash made regarding the Jimmy Snow situation and and the whole slew of tweets was a, a mess. Now I don't think Alicia intended it to be that way but just a lot of the things she said didn't sit right with me and so after that she, she has this group of friends she calls the Big Six, and some of them are YouTubers, actually, and I don't know if I want to name them in this video, so for now I'm not going to name them. I, I may change my mind halfway through this video. But anyway, so I, I sent her some tweets before that. I, I'm going to be uh, uh, honest about that. But I, I wasn't trying to be a troll, and I wasn't trying to be annoying and just go at her. Like, these were actual serious issues that I had issue with. And maybe I shouldn't have spoken up at some point. So, <laughs> hello, Alicia's friends, the big six, or whatever you want to call them. They, they started cursing me out. They started saying, F you, F this. You're I, I have been ignorant. And, and mind you, before this, like, I was really trying to just toe the line to be like, I have issues with this. But I wasn't trying to attack Leash. I... That wasn't my intention, and if it came across that way, I am really so sorry that I'm touching my eye a lot. I, I feel like I have something in my eye. Anyway, ignore it. <laughs> but, anyway, so these people started coming at me being like, F you, F this, you're an effing loser, and... Your whole channel is a joke because you say you stand for ableism, but because you're like using such like insignificant instances, this is a joke and you're 
reveal why I think a serious issue. And to that, I say no, because there are instances of a ableism that happen on a smaller scale. And, and it builds up to what happens on a bigger scale, like systemic ableism is real. And to just discredit my entire platform just because you feel like one or two things I said you don't agree with or you don't think I'm correct on, that's like, uh, no, you don't get to do that. And I'm st strong enough now to say that. And I just felt like Hello Leash was very nasty towards me. And and to be fair, she might have been having a bad day because she said she was having a rough day. But you don't get you don't get to f f funnel all of your f frustrations out on the closest person. It's it's not right. Like you should have. I argued with what I said and said, you're wrong, Erica, and that's it. I disagree. Like, that would have been fine. I would have been fine with that. But instead, you went in on me saying, F you for this, because I, I, I said you're, I said something along the lines of you're having a bad day because of your own choices. And I might have been wrong. I don't know why she was having a bad day. So I was off base there, and I will admit that. And But at the time, I was under that impression. But she went in on me and was like, F you, how could you say this? And I'm like, I'm like, uh, what? I don't know what's going on in your life, but I can't be held responsible for not knowing that if you're not going to open up about that. <laughs> and just the way I've seen her conduct herself around other people has just not been good. Like the way she handled the situation with Edwin's generation and how the second he asked her a question, she just went and said, I'm going to end your SHIT. Like, I feel like the way she goes at people is she doesn't seem to be okay with someone disagreeing with her. And I realized, hell, at least if she saw this, she would be like, no, that's not true. There are tons of people that disagree with me that I'm okay with. But this is my perception here. She seems to go at everybody as if they're a, a hater, a, a detractor, when it's like sometimes people genuinely don't agree or they genuinely would like to ask a question. And I feel like that's a good life lesson for everybody, even myself. But I feel like she allowed her friends to go in on me and say, F this, F that. And it's like, if, and I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to toe the line here, but if my friends were going at somebody on my behalf, especially in that way. Like, it would be different if they were just arguing with someone, but if they were saying, F you, F this, I, 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 would, I, I would have a private conversation with them and be like, you cannot speak this way, especially not on my behalf, in my defense to someone who hasn't spoken to you this way. And I'm not against cursing, but I am against cursing people out, especially if it's like, if they didn't curse you out first. And that's why I'm no longer on, on Twitter, because I was tired of being cursed out by people. And... Yeah, I just feel like Hello Leash 
cannot take criticism, and also I feel like she's a bit hypocritical, and many people might disagree with me on this, and that is perfectly fine, as long as you're re respectful in the comments. But, so, back when Hello Leash and Gabby Hanna first went and had it back in like the summer of 2020, Gabby allowed her fans to go after Hello Leash, and Hello Leash said, well, I'm such a small channel compared to yours. How can you do that? But what makes what Hello Leash did to me different than that? And now I know people are going to say, because Hello Leash didn't just tweet at you unprompted, but neither did Gabby Hanna towards Hello Leash. Hello Leash was talking to Gabby Hanna first before Gabby Hanna even responded. And that's the same thing that happened with me and Hello Leash. But why, since Gabby has like 6 million subscribers, is that different? And also, <laughs> like, your friends cannot be very nasty people that that is a reflection of you the the company you keep is a reflection of who you are and this even goes back to the jimmy snow situation back when he was like defending gabby hanna the company you keep especially in the public sphere but the maze even goes into the private sphere who you are friends with privately and what kind of behavior you can t t tolerate from them says a lot about you and no and they and it's not just about me because hello leash does this to other people and i've gotten countless comments from people saying they've experienced this and the second people post a video about her they get d d disliked dislike bombed and it kind of scares them away from doing it again but i'm not going to be scared scared he you can dislike my video you can leave me a, a comment disagreeing with me but that's not going to make me be silent it might make me take a step back and try to hear what people are saying especially if a lot of people are saying something because a lot of times there is some truth to what people are saying but i'm not going to be scared into silence and oh, okay so for some reason this didn't this part didn't record the first time around but well, what I basically said is there is this YouTuber Hamby's Ramble Hosen, I believe her real name is Hosen, and she made a, a video about this, about how Hello Leash is using her autism diagnosis as an excuse to, as an excuse to obsess and fixate on on Gabby Hanna and she's basically saying I don't view Gabby Hanna as a person I view her as a concept and number one that is dehumanizing even if I don't like Gabby Hanna it's not okay to be like oh well I don't view you as a person I see you as a, a concept Gabby Hanna is not a, a f f oh, f f uh, 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 Sophie, she's a person. And Bambi's Rambles also said that this is kind of ironic coming from Hello Leash since when Jimmy Snow used his autism to excuse some of his behaviors she's like no you can't do that but it's like so why can you and so i just wanted to give a shout out to that youtuber and also a quick yeah 
a tweet thread, a Twitter thread, whatever you want to call it, um, where you basically said in your video that you have an autistic crush on Gabby Hanna, which is an elaboration or a tongue-in-cheek joke that you played off a Mean Girls lesbian joke, right? And it explains your hyperfixation on her and you see it as a concept, not as a person. Okay. At the very beginning of my YouTube career. And guess what? I have made no secret of the fact that um, I have this big, fat, autistic crush on Gabby Hanna. And no, it's not a crush, but it is somewhat of probably a hyperfixation on her as a concept. Thank you, Jojo. There's so much wrong with this sentiment that I just, I don't know where to begin. But what I will start by saying is, Gabby Hanna's not a concept. She's a person. She's a person. And when, when I see a lot of your videos and a lot of other people's videos, they talk about how Gabby Hanna blames a lot of her mishaps, faults, dramas, controversies, everything on her ADHD. And you have criticized her for that. Have you not? So why is it okay for you to say, explain why you're like this using autism, okay? She is a, a human being, and if you're posting multiple videos about her back to back to back to back, that's concerning for people because they're like, you're, you won't leave Gabby alone. And so I really liked Hamby's Rambles video on this, so I'll try to link it down below if I remember during it editing i can't make any promises but if not type in bambi's rambles on on youtube and you should be able to find it there and and also the the other issue with this is mel hello leash back when jimmy snow was facing a lot of heat for the Gabby Hanna situation and his involvement in it. Um, Hello Leash basically said you can't use your autism as an excuse to conduct yourself like this. But it's like, but you can use it as an excuse to obsessively post one hour long videos on G G Abby Hanna. I don't think that's right. And I don't think it's right to say, well, I don't view G Abby Hanna as a person. I view her as a concept because Gabby Hanna isn't a concept. This isn't like, this isn't, Gabby Hanna is not a philosophy. She's a person. I, even if she's not a, a, a good person, she's still a, a person. And yeah, I think that's the end of this video. Thank you for watching it. If you learned something or if you enjoyed it or whatever, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you have not already and you are interested in seeing more of my content, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Again, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again next time. Bye!